Thousands of us hit the hiking trails or take a bike ride along the river. But there are brand new outdoor sports to discover, including one sport that takes the love of climbing to new heights. So right now we're just getting the rigging all nice and perfect. So let's try that. Can you actually pull some of that in? Yep, that's good. Feels perfect tension-wise. And now I'm gonna double check, make sure it's through my harness. I got my harness on the right way. It's through both of these loops, and I'm good to go. I'm Wade Desai. I've been doing Highline for almost two years. In my normal life, I'm an emergency room doctor. I work up at Allegheny General Hospital. So when we're walking, we use our hands. I actually was introduced to slackline in the rock climbing community where this piece of rope is called webbing, it's flat, and rock climbers use it for anchors. Hello, Pittsburgh. <laughs> and for years and years, I had seen this stuff used in that way, and then I met a friend in the rock climbing world who said, you can walk on that stuff, it's called slackline, it's fun. Slackline is simply the umbrella term for balancing on top of webbing. But then when you do slackline low to the ground, the first time someone did it high up, they needed a different name to describe that. So they called it highline. I think it's very common for rock climbers to come into highlining thinking that they're gonna sort of already be experienced and a little bit ready for it. And when you're truly in a sense of void where there's nothing around you except for something so small, your sense of I don't know, balance and perspective totally becomes very, 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 very in the forefront. But one of the things that also separates us a lot from tightrope walking is we do yoga. Woo! I'm basically bouncing a little bit so that I can try to get my weight above the line and sit up on it and then stand in the same bounce. And then it's just one foot after the other. You keep your eyes fixed on something in the distance and you let your mind wander. And one of the coolest things about Pittsburgh is that you can come here and do this stuff. Just last week, we had someone who flew in from Italy, their first time to the United States. They flew into New York City, and Pittsburgh was their second location because they knew that this community existed here and they wanted to get on our slack lines. There's a truly, truly special, special element to this sport that's just beyond the physical parts of it. Don't get me wrong, I look down and I definitely get scared. It absolutely puts me in my place. But I think at the same time, I've conditioned myself to enjoy this fear. You force yourself to a very stressful, stressful place and have to remain calm. So it's battling this part of your brain that you don't talk to very often. And then spend as much time as you spend out there, you become more comfortable with that part of your, your persona. It has this entire spiritual element to it. It truly does. You got this, Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea. Yeah. Come on. Woo! Yeah, Chelsea! Nice. Is that the first time she's ever done that? She's been doing it for maybe like less than a year, and this is probably one of the first times that she's strung together that many steps like that. I had a very large turning point in my life in just my perspective on everything in general when I was able to become comfortable walking on this line. It gave me a sense of confidence in things that I pre previously had not had and made me very much approach the world with the mentality that so long as you work on something and really, really work on it, you could probably do it because I never thought I was going to be able to do this. 